Hey everyone, I wanna share another video here that will take advantage of a free product that Google has put out called Looker Studio to analyze these spring student survey course data. So we have these Likert items by teachers and their period, and we have something like 57 questions, 56 or 57. So it's a lot of data to process. And Looker Studio has a way in which we can use it to process a lot of these data in visually appealing ways. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. We're gonna to start here in Looker Studio. You can just Google it or it's lookerstudio.google.com. I'll start here a blank report. So we'll start from scratch. Um, immediately, Google wants you to connect to a data set and it makes it very easy with our Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and link to it already kind of found what Google Sheets I have in my drive. So make sure that you have it saved somewhere where Google can find it or you can find it here through your browser. But I'm going to link it to my uh, this Google Looker Studio and uh, go ahead and add my data. <clears throat> And I'm going to add it to the report. You can add multiple data sets. There's, there's lots of things you can do with this. Of course, this one we're just going to do um, work on this student spring survey. Uh, already, Looker Studio is giving us an example of something it can do. So for example, it created this table, just automated uh, a table of how many responses by teacher. Um, so that's kind of like a response count for each teacher. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that to start from scratch. Um, and let's say I'm interested in uh, creating a bar chart for some of the items that are um, in my survey. So I'm going to add a chart here and click this add a chart and bar. And I'll plop that down in the report. You can see again, Looker Studio is creating something that it, it thinks I might want, um, but I want to change that because I'm interested in looking at this. How clear is your understanding of what this teacher expects of you? Okay, so I'm going to change that and put drag that over here to the dimension line. And you can see, and I'll make this big for a second so you can see it. Uh, notice it is counting across the entire data set on this item. How clear is your understanding? Um, by these categories, and it's sorting it by the least to the greatest. So not at all clear had 30 students in the school versus quite clear had 429. Okay, so you can hover over these and see the count for each one of them. All right, so that that's pretty interesting. But notice I don't have any title and I've got this called record count. I'm going to switch that here. I just hit the little pencil button and I'm going to call that number of students to, to remind myself of what that scale is. And then I can, what's kind of nice, I can add a text, text box here and I'm going to just write in the question. So here it's how clear is your understanding of what this teacher expects of you? All right, so I'm going to find my text box and write that in. How clear is your understanding of what this teacher expects of you? All right, and then we can format it here. I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to shrink this down. Now you, you can play around with colors and all this style page here. You can make if we didn't like blue, you know, NC State red. Maybe we want some red. We can color it by red instead of blue. But there, there's ways to edit this. You can make these labels larger. But for now. I have a clear sense of the question and then how it's filtered. But notice it's filtered across the entire school. And what if I'm interested in understanding better about individual teachers and then the periods they work in because I have that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two things. I'm going to add a control, this drop down list, and I'm going to paste it right here. And instead of that question, I'm going to scroll down over here in my variables and I'm going to plop that in for a teacher. So now I have this filter of every teacher that I can select or not select. I can select just teacher 11, for example, or I can select all the teachers, however it is. But I've created this filter of teacher that will inform the entire page. Whatever's on that page is going to filter by that. And I'm going to add one more. I'm going to create another drop down list and I'm going to do the period. Okay. So that's the class period. So now I've created my question. It's been sorted by these uh, categories, largest to smallest. And I've now created these two filters of teacher and period. So to check out my progress here, I'm going to go ahead and go to this view. And this lets me see my dashboard. Notice I can now filter by teacher. So let's say I'm interested in just looking at teacher 11. Notice the data updates with those categories. Uh, they don't have any that's not that's not clear or unclear at all, but they have 24 of their students were extremely clear, 20 were quite, 10 were somewhat, and five were slightly. Okay. And we can also say, well, what about period? Let's say I just was interested in looking at their period three. I could do the same thing here and see the distribution of uh, clear by that period. All right. So a really handy feature, I can go back into my edit mode. And what you could do now, I know we have like 56 items or so, but you may want to create pages for each of these questions. So to do that a little bit quickly, you could just, let's say, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. So I've replicated that, but instead of how clear, uh, I might want to be interested in how clearly does this teacher present the material in class. And notice this distribution now has changed based on that new Likert scale, same same kind of clear scale, but you can see the responses differ. Um, and um, we will then title it because we don't have that. So I'm just going to grab this title, move it down, and remind myself this is how clearly does the teacher present how clearly does the teacher present the material in class. Okay, I've updated that. And now if I go back to my view, we can see how that's sorted again by this teacher. Maybe we want to see the full data set. So we're going to select everyone here. And you can look by period. Maybe we'll just select all the time periods here, the class periods, excuse me. And you can see that distribution. Okay. So that is one way to begin to look at the distribution of your data. Now in one more video, if you're interested, I can show you how to sort these not by the um, 
their count, but by the scale of not at all clear to extremely clear, so that you can see from that range of left to right, kind of small to clear or not clear to clear, or whatever the scale is from low to high, whatever you're looking at, uh, you can sort by that. So I'll do one more video on that. But for now, this shows you a little bit of how you might do it. Now, I should add, if you want to do more, notice we're at the end of our page, you can just add a new page here. And so page one has these two items. Uh, you could copy these again. You could paste them into, you could copy everything on this page, paste it into here, and then just make your updates. You can say, well, instead of doing how clearly, how about how closely do you listen? And so I shift that one and I can click here and do the next one. How comfortable are you? All right. And then all I would need to do would be to update these labels, these titles here to reflect those questions. Um, but that's one way to organize these data.